Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush. I make indie games for a living. Come on in. Let's have a good time today. Today's going to be really fun. We're going to be making snatchable gems, coins, exploding from boxes, and collecting them for our, our little buddy in our dog game. This is going to be really fun. So let's jump inside of Unity and get started. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Check one, two, one, two, there I am. All right, so <laughs> all right, guys. So what we've got here is we've got a coin here, and then we've got a, a schmacko right here, the chicken wing, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to first, I wanna show you what's going on. So let me turn off the music really quick. We don't want any music. I'm just gonna hit play here and show you what we've got, okay? All right. So yesterday what we created was the ability to have random clothes. So basically at the beginning of, and random breeds too. At the beginning of the game, we'll have a little icon where you can press it and it'll randomize. And you can pick your random doggo. Okay, so you can randomize as many times as you want, but for the game, you're gonna have to pick one. So let's say we pick this guy. Then what we do is we go to our coin here. We've got a coin there, and then we've got snacks here, and they fill up the heart, okay? So, pretty cool, right? Um, what I wanna do here is basically, I was looking at a hat in time, and what I wanna do is, a hat in time is a great 3D platformer, and what they have is they have uh, notes that play when you collect coins. So, a boop, 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 and it goes up in pitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a coin collection sound that we really like. Then we're gonna iterate maybe 10 pitches, okay, um, going up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump inside of our browser here. I'm gonna go to Artlist, hold on. I'll show you my screen in just a sec. All right, so here's Artlist. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find, I'm gonna type game sounds. Okay, because there's some really cool retro game sounds that they have uh, that I really, really like here. Game. So let's do game health until we get here. Ooh, I like that. So None of these are really that great. Hold on. Ooh. I like that. Let's use that for now, okay? And then one more, game coin. By the way, if you haven't downloaded my free 2D game kit below, it's totally free, my treat to you. you. Be sure to click below. Ooh, I like that too. Be sure to click below to take a look at that. You can use it however you want. I used it to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, but you can use it however you want. That's insane, that's a little too much. I want like a bing. I kind of like that, but it's a gem. 
So let's look for a gem. Ding! Hmm. Did I already download that one? I think I did, but let's just grab it just in case. I kind of like that for the for the heart sound. So we're going to keep that. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, a bell sound might work. We, we can look for that. Game bell. Ding. Nope. Okay, I think these are good. Let's open up this one here. We're gonna mix the two, a bubbly sound and then a bell sound. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so let's export that out. Make sure we want it between negative 12 and negative six, all right? Um, so just drop it down just a tad. There we go. And we're gonna export it as a WAV file. And we're gonna type in coin one coin collect one okay this is the only one we're going to work with currently all right and we just want to make sure it sounds perfect before we start creating various pitches all right so i'm going to scroll down to our coin sounds uh we have a coin sound right here currently it's set to the dog eat sound we don't want that so let's just go to coin collect one and we can just put it in all three slots for now just to see how it feels when we collect our coin Remember guys, sound is everything. Feels pretty good. All righty, very good. So we've got the coin collection sound. I like it, it's not bad. Um, so I'm gonna mix and render those down into one track. And we're just gonna go up. The theory is by notes. So from B to A. Uh, C, it's a little too low. So really what we should do here is from, ah yes, from C to D, okay? So we're just going up by major uh, steps, right? Coin, collect, two. We're gonna keep on going up, okay? And I don't even think we have to make any changes to how much the iteration is. I think we just gotta repeat that effect um, yeah, you know, like 10 times here. Keep going. And we might need to increase the volume every once in a while. And the way this is handled, I believe it's already ready to go in the script, and I can show you how we're doing this. Basically, in the script, we have a timer, and if the timer gets over a second, then it will reset the pitch back to its baseline. So you can run through like 10 coins, boop, 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 boop. But if you don't collect a coin for a second, it resets. Okay, let's go one more. And let's try that out. Now here's the truth. Part of me has a feeling that we're gonna have two sounds. We're gonna have a collect sound and then a pitch sound. Uh, because it's not, it's not my favorite sound right there. Okay, but let's go ahead and check. We've got collect coin one, two, three, four. One, haha, <laughs> one, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so we've got five sounds here uh, that we can use to collect our coins. So I'm going to make a guess here that this is not going to work um, as it stands. But let's just double check here. I'm gonna click apply all here and I'm gonna drag 10 coins. And what we wanna see is these sounds increase as we collect them five times. But once it hits the fifth one, it's just gonna play that one over and over again. So let's hit play. Ooh. 
Yes. I can't believe it works. I didn't even test it. Uh, that feels really good. Let's try one more time. Okay, so we've got an issue here. Index out of range. So we did get an error there. Let's double check, double, check, double click, and take a look here. Coin sound index. All right, so let's take a look and see what our coin sound index is. That's just the ID that tells us, you know, which coin sound to play. Uh, it's currently a public integer, so we can take a look at it on the actual player himself. So let's scroll all the way up and go to player here, player controller. By the way, guys, if you haven't checked out my free 3D course below, be sure to check that out. It's my treat to you. This uh, course is totally free. You can enroll whenever you want, and you can also take the course at your own uh, speed. And you're just gonna learn how to make 3D games, and the cool part is you don't even have to learn anything related to modeling. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to create a very basic uh, 3D game inside of Unity. So be sure to check that out. Good evening, Abdul. How you doing, buddy? All right, so let's take a look here. We've got um, the coin sound index. Let's take a look at what it is. It's currently set to zero. So as we collect our, co our coins here, it should go up. So five, I see. So we need to have it reset at a lower value, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're going to go to our little coin sound timer here. Let me show you what it does. So if the timer is smaller than one, it's gonna count all the way up to one. When you collect something, it pops it back down to zero. So that means um, that as it's, uh, if it's lower than one, um, the coin sound index is going to increase based on the collected coin and that's happening in the coin collection script So what we want to do here is we actually want to go to the collectible script um, Let's see here No, 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 where is it? Ah, yes, it's somewhere else So down here in the collection script what we need to do is we need to say if it's smaller than the coin sound length then we can increase but really we're seeing a problem here because the coin sound length Ah, yes, it needs to be minus one. I believe that that's, that's okay. So let's take a look here. It really should only go to four. Zero, one, two, three, four, right? Which is actually five slots in the array here, right? But it's actually only going up to four. So let's take a look. All right, there's coin sound index. It should only go up to four. So let's watch it. And it's right here, guys. Right here. Let's watch it. Good, all right. Okay, very, very good. So that seems to be working just fine. Um, it's fun to collect them. I'm not gonna change the sounds. Uh, I, think, I think we're pretty good here. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that these are random. Now, in Zelda, there's variations of the coin value, right? Um, in this case, I think that's that's fine. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the value uh, down here, one, five, 10, and 20. Basically, we're gonna change the gem size as we go up. So we have these four different gems, all right? So what we need to be thinking of is what are the vari variations in color and how do they associate with the value? So I'm gonna call this gem one, and then this is gem five, and this is gem 10, or even, how about 25? And this is gem 100, okay? So there's the variations in value. Um, the next thing I wanna do here is make sure the colors associated, sorry, this wire is driving me nuts. The, the colors associated with each gem look about right, okay? So this one is, and also it needs to be a little bit bigger too. So we can do a big golden gem here, um, I'm gonna do gold for the big gem. Actually, let's go to Zelda and figure out what those values are. I think that would be really, really good to do here. Um, Rupee types Zelda. I'm gonna go with Ocarina of Time. Actually, let's go with Wind Waker. Pink should be the highest value based on Spyro. Gotcha. Okay, coin values in Wind Waker. Colors. 
Wind Waker. So what do we got here? There we go. So one is green, good. Five, 20, 50, what is that? Is that like pink or something? Wait, what? Okay, well, let's start with the green one. So this is the regular one. So this is gonna be that green. In my games, a little bit more bluish green. Um, that one's five, so we're gonna go with blue, right? So this is our blue one. I'm actually gonna rotate it up. 0, 90, negative 90. Okay, and let's disable the 100 and the 25. So this is our, um, can we zero it out? Yeah. So that one's going to be blue. Okay. There we go. So let's do a little bit of blue here. I think a, let's see, double check here. So we've got green and then blue. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Green, yeah, maybe a more of a neon green actually. Yeah, there we go. That, that fits perfectly within uh, the style of our game. Um, that looks good. Gem 25. If we go to our browser here, you can see we have 25 is red. Okay, so I think that's, that's totally fine. Um, I feel like, let's see here. I feel like this one, yeah, I feel like that should actually be five, the square. So that's going to be the blue, which we're good here. This is going to be the 25 value, um, or 20, 20 value. So five of those equals 100. Um, I think we're only going to go to, hmm, I don't know. Let's double check here. So this is going to be pinkish color. So that's actually our value of our uh, 20. And then I'm just going to go up to 100, okay, guys? 100, I think I'm going to have it be... Um, pink okay pink sounds great actually that one's already pink so I think this one is fine yellow boom okay not that big but a little bit bigger that looks pretty cool all right so we've got these five four gen uh, gem types so let's see here what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our values here and I'm actually just going to write this down. Uh, I'm basically going to say there's values of coin values include 1, 5, 10, I'm sorry, 20, and then 100. Okay, That's all we're going to do for now. Um, we could change out the values of the hearts and all that and the food. Right now, I'm just worried about the coin values. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and create a new script here. Our new function is going to be called public set graphics. All right. Now, this is going to be interesting. So we also need a integer. Let's see here. Graphic. Good, good, good. Um, we're going to call this graphic parent really quick, just so I don't get confused here. Graphic parent. That's the parent basically disables the graphic, but we want to be able to set the graphics. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go public. We're going to call this game object, and this is going to be graphic tiers. All right. This is actually going to be an array. And basically, we're going to have the tiers get set based on the actual value that we have, right? Um, so if graphic tiers, if it exists, or in this case, it would be dot length is greater than zero. If that's the case, then go ahead and set the graphics, okay? We're going to set the graphics here in a wake. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if my value is uh, smaller than or equal to a value of four, really honestly just is smaller than five. And this will be a sort of a global approach here. Food and coins all have these sort of valuations, okay? Um, else if, and we could do a switch case if we wanted to guys, but I'm just gonna do it if statements here. Uh, if the value is smaller than If it's greater than, value is greater than zero, uh, one, and smaller than a value of 10, or actually 20, then do X, right? So the graphical tiers, we're gonna set that in just a second. Um, but for now, I'm just setting up the conditions. Good. Setting up these conditions. 
if it, the value is smaller or uh, greater than or equal to 20 uh, or greater than or equal to um, hmm greater than or equal to five there we go yes and then over here it's going to be greater than or equal to a value of 20 and smaller than a value of what are we doing uh, 100 wait what I think I think I missed missed one here so that's zero uh, I'm one. This one is I'm five. Uh, yes, 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 yes. This one is I'm 20. And guys, the reason I'm going about it this way and not just equal values is because if I accidentally stuck type in 21, I still want it to be that, that one coin. Uh, it's not my favorite approach here, but I think it's going to be fine. Okay. There we go. Um, so if the value is greater than or equal to 100, and that's about it. Okay. I'm 100. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not sure what this is and why I'm getting an error here uh, because it doesn't return anything. Public void set graphics, good. Ugh, my chair keeps going down. All right, guys. So we've got these tiers set up. So now we need to actually set those graphics, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, um, graphic tier, tiers, zero dot set active, true. That's all we're gonna do. Tier one, set active true. Tier two, set active true. Tier three, set active true. All right. Now the reason I'm going about it this way is because I wanna be able to randomly assign values, okay? Um, when we explode coins. I want there to be some sort of randomness to it. So if we can basically set the value, actually, this is interesting. Um, I think I will, what I really want to do is go through a value set of one through four. Um, value index. Okay. So we would basically have public integer value index, and we would have it go with the ability to go the one through four. Um, yeah, I think I need to do it that way. Uh, the value index would be a value of one. And then the actual value itself is determined. Um, coin values are set based on the value index. Can include 1, 5, 20, 100. Ah, got it. OK, good. So here's what we do. If value index, now we can do it a little bit easier here equals one or zero, uh, else if value index equals one, two, and then three, okay? We can have a total, I think I'm gonna do one, I think it's fine, zero, okay? Value index by default zero. Value index can go up to three. So what we're doing here is basically saying the value index can be set randomly uh, or it can be specified by me, the developer. And I could say one, two, or three. And that value index is going to set the value to one, five, 20, and then 100. And as you can see here, all we've actually got to do is this. Okay, so that's actually really what we want to do here. Um, it's going to be right 
just like this. Going to be on the outside of the, the statement here. And also, we don't even need this. Um, that, yep, yep, yep. So we're going to actually put this here. There we go. And then this goes above this. There we go. And it's really going to be called set values. All right. So what does this mean, guys? The theory is, if we go to Unity, there we go. The theory is we set the value. Actually, really quick, let's make sure value is set to private. We don't want to see that. Um, okay. The value is uh, set. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually just going to be 0. It's set in here. Okay. So that means we can change our value index, all right? So zero is the baseline value of one. Um, one is five, two is 20, and then three is 100. And this is going to be true across the board for both food values and then also coin values, all right? Now let's go ahead and set up our graphical tiers. Um, and by the way, let's make sure, get some clarity here. Cool, our graphic tiers are saying, if it's greater than zero, then we'll manipulate the graphics. So let me do that really quick. We've got a, four slots, one, two, three, four, okay? So let's go ahead, and also these should be disabled. So what we're gonna do is just disable all of them. How do I disable all of the children in a, um, in a group? Disable all children in Unity. How to deactivate all children in Unity? Let's take a look here. For each transform and child, child game object dot set active false. Okay. So what we need to do is on awake when we go to set values, um, if the graphic tiers dot length is greater than zero, we just want to make sure we deactivate all of them first. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be child for uh, the child in transform dot it's actually going to be in the graphic tiers dot and it's going to be the first one and then we're going to say dot transform dot parent uh yeah dot transform uh yeah i think that should do it so basically what it's doing is it's saying um who's ever the parent of one of our first graphics then just go find that parent and then disable all of them first. Disable all of them first and then enable the, the correct one, okay? So that allows us to be actually be able to see our gems here. Um, also, we can, if we wanted to, you know, if I change it to a value index of one here, it's still gonna remain green. So I'm, I'm curious if what I wanna do is in the editor, it automatically assigns it uh, in edit mode. So let's set that to one. Let's set this one to two and this one to three and then hit play. Good, so far so good. Not really. Okay, we've got a few issues here. First thing, the variable graphic has not been assigned. Graphic parent, ah yes, I, it's not assigned. So that's, that's what happened here, okay? So we just need to go back because we, we renamed the the parent structure, I think. Graphic parent there, set it right there. Uh, the same is true with this chicken wing here. Graphic parent is going to be this. And, you know, the same is true with all this stuff here, the beef. But the way the way that the, the health is gonna be handled is actually gonna be very similar to the coins. So let's get the coins done first. Okay, so for some reason, those didn't get set properly. Uh, let's double check here. So this is a graphic tier of... <gasps> Whoa. One. Hmm. I don't like how they're being renamed. Why are they being renamed? There's something going on here. 
I have like a save system doing something here. There it is. Player property sync. I'm going to remove that. We don't need that right now. Okay. There we go. Okay, guys, let's take a look. Hopefully, I didn't. Hopefully, things aren't being renamed anymore. Nope, they still are. But I'm, I'm, I still don't think that that's the problem. Gem 100 is always being set. Uh, so we need to take a look and see what's going on. Um, ah, that's what's happening. Okay, we're good here. We're good. So I just need to set it to the value index. And that's it. All right, guys, let's take a look. Good. Look at that. All right. So that works great. The next thing I want to do is create some sort of value indicator above my head. Um, I, I, I don't even know if I want to do that, to be honest. Let's take a look and make sure our values are being set properly. So if we hit play here and we'll go to our gems. We have it set to zero. So that's one. That's five. Good. One. 100. Good. OK. All right, so we also have the ability to, cre to create unique sounds. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Is it, is, are the sounds unique in Zelda when you collect a coin? I'm trying to remember. I don't know if they are. Yeah, I'm not so sure if they are. But let's go ahead and do the same sort of uh, thought process with our chicken wings, okay? So I'm gonna delete all of our health chicken wings except for that one. And what we're gonna do is go to our health chicken wing, make sure it's in the right category. Okay, we've got coins. I'm gonna call this health and then delete these. Um, well, we're not gonna delete them yet. So basically what we're gonna do here is we have this meat pickup here um, and I can just basically drag in, um, oh good, we've got all the foods here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new game object. This is gonna be called gra uh, pa uh, graphic parent. Yeah, really it's called graphic tiers. Zero it out, set it to one, 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 one. Pull this meat pickup down there, good. So we have one, so this is gonna be the meat pickup, good. We're also gonna have the beef. And really, these are already set up as prefabs. Um, so I'm gonna call this pickup graphics for now. There we go. So I can just drag in the meat. That's the beef. There we go. We are going to have cupcakes. So I feel like cupcakes should be the lowest tier, right? So you have cupcakes, you have chicken wings, you have beef, and then you have pie. I think pie should be a lower tier as well. Um, good. So I think pie, you have cupcakes, pie. So I want them to scale pretty good here. Pie, chicken wing, and then beef, right? There's our four tiers, all right? So now if we go to our actual, see, by the way, we're using the same script, guys. We're using the same script here. Sorry, my camera just lost uh, its battery. Um, but we're using the same script here. Basically, this collectible script is going to be reused across the board with health, coins, and stars, which the stars in this game are going to be bones. When I say star, I mean like collectible stars at the end of a level. All right. So let's go to our graphical tiers here. We're going to set it to four values and just drag in cupcake pie, meat pickup, and beef. Now, this should work, honestly, um, it should already work. So let's uh, disable all of these except for the, pot, the cupcake, there it is. And that's incorrect, let's zero that out. Let's see here, let's double check something. Zero out the, yeah, there we go. So we have this health pickup it's really called health, so I'm going to disable it or uh, rename it. I'm going to apply all. Good. Um, and all of these other ones, 
the other pickups that we have, we don't need any of those. We don't need any of those, so we're going to delete all of that. Let's see here. Oh, delete these two. And now we have this one generic health pickup. And all we got to do now, guys, oh, and this one here as well. We don't need that and anymore. Just want to make sure I clean up the scene here. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So now we have this cupcake. The cupcake, the value index is currently set to zero. This one will be one, and this one will be two, and then this one will be three. Whoops. Put it over here. So let's make sure that the very simplistic code that we wrote for this um, these various object types works across the board for both coins and for food. It does. It was that simple. But we have a few issues with things not being collectible. Let's double check what's going on here. I'm going to delete all of these except for that one because it's getting me a little confused here. Delete. So this is our health. It's currently set to zero. Um, trying to double check all of our that uh, the graphic the graphic tiers was incorrect. Hit apply. And now let's try it out. Let's just hit play on just this one. Pug B. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we got ourselves a cupcake. Um, let's double check and see if we can change the graphical or the value indexes now. The value index is an interesting way to go about this. Um, I understand that, but I actually don't mind it at all because if I if I know that I've got four values uh, for all, really it's one through two. Ah, yes. So this should be three. That should be two. That should be one. Let's take a look. Puggy unknown. All right, look at this. Good, awesome. All right, works great, guys. Next thing that we wanted to do on our list is we want these to be able to launch um, on start. The reason we want this is so that when we break a box, all of them will explode, okay? One of the things I have an issue with though is I wanna make sure that they don't interact with each other, okay? So that's really the first step is to ensure none of these will interact with each other. So let's go to our project settings here, go to our physics and take a look at what we've got here. Things with the layer pickup should not interact with each other, okay? So I'm gonna disable those. Now, what I wanna do though, is I wanna make sure that the pickup, uh, there's a layer and there's a tag. I wanna make sure something's going on here. The tag pickup is useless. I'm gonna remove that tag, okay guys? That's a useless tag because use it being used by health. The health script? We talking about what? What's health? This object here? Let's double check something. Let's type in pickup. All entire solution. What's it being used by? Hmm, I don't know. Sorry, I had to turn on my fan here. Um, I don't really know what it's being used by. Let's try and do it one more time and figure out what's going on here. Look at all these tags. This is so weird. So we've got a ton here. And then we go to add tag. I want to delete this. But I can't because it says it's being used by coin one. Is it really? Ah, you have to turn them off. 
you have to take them off first. I see. Okay. And then also our health on tag. Now let's take a look and see if we can remove it. That's annoying. Okay. Let's go back to add tag and make sure it's removed. It just says removed, whatever. That's so dumb, Unity. All right, guys. So the tag has been removed. We don't need that. What we really need to worry about is its layer. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the health here. And we're going to change the layer to not to pick up. I don't like that word. I would rather it be collectible. Okay. We don't want collectibles to interact with each other. Um, so we're just going to make sure that the this value is set to collectible. And it's just going to be this object only. Okay. And that's set to collectible. Good. And then also the coin we want to be able to set to collectible as well. All right. So now we can go to the project settings and ensure that they don't interact with each other in the physics. So collectibles will not interact with each other, which is great. Now, let's make sure it's being rendered by the camera. So let's go to our camera here, uh, which is right here. Go to our Calling mask, and you can see that collectible is not included. So let's make sure we include it in our camera. I want to hit play just to double check. Good. Awesome. Okay. So far, so good, guys. Now, a couple things to, to think about here. We want rigid bodies to have the object drop and fall to the ground. I'm pretty sure I want this to occur all the time. So I'm going to start with just this coin here. I'm going to set the rigid body to use gravity, but not as kinematic. Well, let's see here. We don't want them to fall to the ground, actually. Gotcha, gotcha. We really want them to be able to be anywhere, OK? Here's why. Because if we want maybe some coins in midair that you have to jump to get, I want those to float. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a script. We're going to go into the collectible script. And we're going to say have a variable called public bull uh, launch on start. And that by default is going to be false. If launch on start is true, then we're going to launch. So let's put that launch right here, public. It's going to be private, actually. Uh, it does need to be public. Maybe public void launch. There we go. So what's launch going to do? First, it's going to set the rigid body. And this will be private. It's going to be a rigid body. Rigid body. It's going to set the rigid body to is kinematic equals false. So we need to make sure we get the rigid body. So rigid body equals get component rigid body. Okay. Then we say rigid body dot add force. I mean we could add an explosion force probably. Let's see here. What what does that value look like? Explosion force. One hundred. Explosion position. Transform dot position. Explosion radius. I don't know, 10. I'm not so sure what that does, but we're going to take a look. But we also want to make sure that the rigid body dot is kinematic is set to false. So that's going to launch it. And let's make sure our colliders are all set up properly here. All right. So this one right here, I'm going to delete all the coins now that we know that they work. Let me make sure I say, hit a, uh, no. We're good here. So that's zero. Nothing to override. Good. So we're just going to start with the coins here. Let's uh, remove the health. All of this stuff here. So we have a coin and health. All right. This one, I'm just going to, let's double check something here. I think we're good. I think we're good to just delete them. 
One of the problems I have though is I want to make sure that when I place an object, it actually gets placed elevated above. So what that means is our box collider needs to be pretty large. Okay, so that's good. Um, all right, so launch on start. Yes, set it to true and see what happens. Hit play. There it goes. It's way, way out there. Let's double check. He's way out there. Good, okay. So obviously you could have specific launch power values. Um, so that may be what we wanna do. We, wanna, we may wanna say launch power. Um, but I actually, like, I, I kinda like things to be very uh, rigid in relationship to how things launch. So I'm gonna say launch Explosion force is something like 10, and we'll see if this is a random value. All right, let's hit play. Man, he flew far. Let's do a value of, what is that? Just do an explosion radius of one and an explosion force of one. Man, I could be wrong here. All right, let's hit play. Dang. I don't like that at all. And by the way, I don't think the mass should be that big. I think it should be like something like 0 0.2. Same with the uh, health. Point two, something like that. All right, so the explosion force, I don't really know if I like it. Um, so let's type in add force. And we're just gonna do a vector three force uh, that's random, so new vector three. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna create a new uh, vector three here. Explosion force, or it's really launch force. Random launch force. Uh, and that is going to equal new vector three, random dot range. Um, how about this? Random launch force. Well, let's see here. Let's create a new float. Launch force multiplier. It's going to be one. Um, Actually, it's going to be 20. And then we're going to say random range, negative launch force multiplier, launch force multiplier. And just do this for x, y, and z. The truth is, though, I don't want it to be negative for y. So we're just going to have it as 0. But we do want it to be negative, potentially, in the z. OK? So that value is now set, random launch force. And that's just going to be right here. Add force, force mode. I don't care about the force mode, I don't think. All right, let's hit play. Where did you go? Holy mackerel. What if I set it to one? What if I set it to zero? because it's making me wonder if we've got an issue associated with the actual coin and not the script here. Yeah, look at that. He still flies off like crazy. So something's going on. Uh, setting it to kinematic equals false might be the problem for some reason. I'm not so sure. Wow, that's crazy. Where'd he go? Did he fall through? I think he's just falling through. It's because it's set to trigger, that's why. Okay, so we also wanna say uh, collider. We, we want the collider 
dot is trigger equals false. Hmm. The next thing on my that I'm thinking about here is if we go to let's say Wind Waker. Wind Waker game rupees. I want to be able to see here uh, how these. I know you can't see my screen. One sec. How these show up on the ground. Do they hover? I don't think they hover necessarily. I think they're like just touching the ground. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Basically, what we're going to do is we have a trigger collider, but then we also have a rigid body collider, okay? So this is our box collider for the collection zone. So that's really should be called collection collider or trigger collider. And then we also have a uh, RB collider, which is our rigid body collider. Okay. We're going to have those two. We're not going to get them in the script. We're going to have to assign them manually. Okay. All right. Hmm. Ah. Um, RB collider enabled equals false, and then also trigger collider. Enabled equals false as well. That should happen when there's a uh, the the object is disabled. Okay. Okay. Now let's drag in the the proper ones. We have this big box collider, which is going to be the trigger collider, but then we're going to have this smaller one. Box collider. And this is going to be the uh, for the actual gem itself. Ugh, what do I want to do here? I don't like this method. I don't like it at all. Yep, okay, I have a better idea. The reason I don't like that is because then you have to set the actual collider value for every single object, every single graphic, and I just don't want to deal with that, so we're not going to deal with it. Instead, we're just going to have one collider, and it swaps like we were going to originally do here. Okay. So basically, we just say collider dot is trigger equals false. Okay. That way, it'll bounce in the ground. That's basically it. That's all we want to do. All right, let's try that out. Okay. So if I lift it up. It falls to the ground. But what we also want to do is go to the rigid body and we want to make sure we freeze its uh, rotation along all axes. Um, this rotator script, we're going to move to the graphic itself. That way we're not rotating the rigid body, we're rotating the graphic. Okay? Paste component right here. Oh. Collectible, oh, come on. Copy, remove, go to our graphics here and paste it. There it is. All right, so it's going to randomly rotate um, either one or positive one. Actually, let's just keep it like this for now. Okay, but now we can't rotate the actual rigid body, it's frozen. All right, we want that. That's good. Um, we also want a bounce material on the box collider. So what we're going to do is go to our physics materials folder, which is, actually, it's got a ball here. Yep, physics material ball. That's a player material, really. 
um, player fall, and then this is player legs. We're going to create one more, and we're going to call it physics material uh, gem. Okay. And all that's going to do is going to have a bounciness of like a value of 0 0.6. Fix object name. There we go. Physics material gem, or physics material collectible. I think that's probably a better word, because we want to be able to use this for our health as well. We just drag that collectible right there, um, and the theory is here that it'll bounce nicely. Let's hit play. There we go, just like Zelda. Good, but now you can see we can hit it, right? Um, we don't want to be able to do that. So I think what we need to do here is um, have a timeout, okay? So if launch on start, launch timeout equals um, like a value of two, okay? Then on update, we'll have an update here. Public void update. We'll say launch timeout plus equals time dot delta time, right? We also need if launch timeout uh, is smaller than or is greater than or, equal, or yeah, greater than zero, then we'll do this. It's actually going to subtract so that if, once it hits zero, um, then we know that we have officially Um, <laughs> timed out, right? And that means our rigid body uh, will be set to uh, is kinematic equals true, and the collider dot is trigger equals false. Okay. Now let's set that is uh, or that launch timeout value. Launch timeout equals zero. Um, Good, good. And this will be if launch on start, right? So basically what this means is, uh, I'm gonna create a launch timeout max. Actually, no, let's just keep it at two. Let's think one, two, two seconds, right? Um, so after two seconds, the player can collect the coin, and it is no longer uh, kinematic. But what we also want to do is we want to say else if um, rigid body dot velocity um, rigid body is sleeping. Hmm. Let's just test this out for now. Okay. All right, so if we launch on start, we're going to launch. The launch will set the launch timeout to two, which means that if it's greater than zero, we start the countdown. We start going down every second. Once it hits zero, or uh, yeah, once it hits zero, it's gonna set everything back to the way it should be, and we can collect the coin, okay? So let's take a look. All right. So two seconds have passed. So it should, <laughs> it should set properly. So it's not doing it for some reason. So let's take a look. Launch timeout equals two. If launch on start and launch timeout is greater than zero, good, good, good. Subtract. Hmm. Let's go ahead and look at the launch timeout value. It always helps to be able to see it in the inspector here. Hit 
play. There's launch timeout. Okay, now it's negative, so it should set our box collider value to is trigger is true, and also our rigid body uh, is kinematic to false, but it's not. Um, hmm. I don't know, guys. Honestly. You put false, I did. Oh, they need to be inverted. You're correct. Way to go, guys. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Nathan and uh, Koyima. Let's hit play here and take a look. One, two, and now I can collect, right? But the problem is we also want kinematic to be true. Duh. <laughs> okay, there we go. We've got it. There we go. Okay, so now we can go ahead and set that launch value. The launch timeout, I don't need to see that anymore, so that'll be private. And now what we wanna do is make sure that that rigid body force, launch force is uh, set properly. I'm actually gonna put this up here. The launch force by default is gonna be something like 20, all right? Let's take a look. It should randomly go in an X direction and a Z direction. The Y direction, however, is not gonna be able to go negative. So let's take a look. So we're at 20 currently. Let's see what happens. Okay, it moved a little bit. I feel like the Y value should always be the same, to be completely honest. Yeah, let's see. I think it should always be just whatever that value is. The, the highest value, um, it should be that. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, let's take a look. Hmm. Interesting. Set it to 100. There we go. So I think it should be a value of 20, but I also think that the y direction should be multiplied times 2. That will give us a nice sort of upward explosion. Oh, thank you, Alexander. That means a lot to me. I really want it to go up and it's not. Maybe it is. I'm gonna disable it, hit play, and then enable it and see what we get. Nope. It's not going up for some reason. There we go. Maybe it just needs to be a much higher value when going up because we're going against gravity. Yeah, I think it does. Times 10, let's take a look. Yay! All right, that's awesome. Um, the problem is they're all gonna land at the same time. So what we need is we need to multiply times a random dot range uh, we're gonna go something like five and ten. Okay, now what that means is you have multiple coins. I'm gonna show you guys really quick. The goal is multiple coins, and when you enable all of them, they burst in a variety of directions. Okay, so this is as if they were instantiated. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is as if they were instantiated. Okay, there they go. Good. Now, hold on. They also need to uh, be in a resting state for them to... This is interesting. Let's figure this out. We want them to be on the ground. Ooh, hey, Jeb. Hey, buddy. All right, here's what we need to do. 
I got it. I figured it out. You need to go outside? Okay. All right. So the, ah, yes, right here. Um, the count that occurs. Then what, where am I? There we go. This right here. Able, uh, um, launch, let me think of the right variable name. Uh, freeze me equals true. Watch this. Not freeze me, it's gonna be freeze me equals true. This is a private variable, okay? Freeze me. Tells the object to begin checking if landed on an object. Okay, that's all we're, all we're doing here. So then we go to this, all the way down to on collision enter. Okay, so we're gonna create a new void on collision enter. Okay, all we're gonna say is if freeze me is true, then go ahead and freeze it. All right, so that means that it has to be resting on the ground first. Okay, and we're good to go. So that should do it. Okay, let's enable. And now they're all on the ground. Sweet. Let's try one more time. Good. All right, guys, it works. Now, the next thing is we want a bounce sound for these objects. Um, really quick, let's let's see how it feels when you try and like collect them a little too early. Uh oh. Wonder why that happened. Let's double check again. We need to figure out if this is actually working. it is but for some reason when I was when I hit him in midair yeah I don't know um, there's really a question here that that needs to be answered and that is if you touch it let's watch this okay let's allow for collision touching with the uh, with the player but we also want to make sure that the timeout the launch timeout is at least greater than like 0.4 or like 0.2. So essentially what we're doing is um, we're allowing the player to collect them, but not immediately. Because otherwise, if you break a box uh, and they all appear on you, you can collect them all, which you're not even able to see them. So let's double check here. Not bad, not bad. Let's take a look again. It feels all right. Try one more time. Yeah, this is one of those idiosyncrasies with collectibles. You want them to be rigid bodies, but you don't want them to really influence the player that much. I think it's gonna be, it'd be better if it was on collision stay. Uh, no, I feel like that's fine for now. 
Yeah, I think we're good, guys. I think that works just fine. I just found it odd that the player could bounce on it. So I think it needs to be something like 0.1. Okay. One more. Good. That feels good. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Now, here's what we want to do. We want a bounce sound. Okay. So let's go to our browser. Um, we're going to go to art list. There we go. And I'm thinking of the sound. It's like a ding, like a ding. Bum, bum. Hmm. Toy piano. But a clink. Xylophone. That feels good. Let's use that. All right, so this is just a little clinking sound when it hits the floor. Okay. Now we'll also have a sound for the health when it hits the floor. And we'll do a random uh, volume as well so it's not super annoying. Fade out. Export as a wave. And this is going to be collectible, bounce, metal. Okay, something more generic because we might use this for other things, right? All right, let's go to our collectible script here. And we're just going to create a uh, single sound. You guys can't see my screen, can you? No, you can't. Okay, good. Uh, this is going to be uh, um, bounce sound. Okay. No, they're not free. These are from Artlist. You have to have a subscription. Okay. So let's go to the on collision enter. Um, basically, if it's not the player, hmm, else if freeze me is false. Otherwise, else if. Freeze me is true, which that ain't, we don't even need that, just else. All right, and what that's going to do is we're going to go audio source or player dot instance dot audio source dot play one shot, and all my sounds are played basically through one audio source. Keeping it simple, guys. Bounce sound. Okay, we'll do right now. We'll keep it at a volume of one. Let's take a look here. Ah. 
All right, there we go. So let's take a look and see if this works. Good. That feels great, guys. So we'll do a random dot range for the volume, 0.5. How about 0.6 to 1.1? I think that's decent. I'm not going to worry too much about that. And now, if we hit play, we'll get a nice few random sounds here with random, vol not random sounds, but one singular sound with random volumes. Very good. So, Here's what we want to do. Apply all. I'm going to delete these coins and let's go to our breakable box. All right. We're going to create a fun, serializable field of game objects that are the spawn sp spawn objects. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the the death of the object, and I'm going to actually create a new private void um, explode, or how about just spawn objects? Okay. And this is fun. So all we got to do here is instantiate. Actually, let's do a for loop. Um, so the for loop will be. I'm going to type in on Google. Uh, spawn, and it's not like I haven't done this before, it's just I always forget. Spawn, uh, multiple objects, for loop. It's really instantiate multiple objects in the for loop in Unity. And Google that. And they'll just give us the script right here. That's it. Some of you might ask, Thomas, why do you Google everything? Well, because you can just take code. <laughs> That's about it. Um, number of children, I know that this is going to be uh, spawn objects dot length. Um, instantiate that object, which is going to be the I. Okay. It's going to be in my transform dot position. Uh, its rotation is going to be Quaternion identity. Good. Its parent will be null. Get component. What is it? Collectible. Remember, guys, dot launch on start is true. See? And that should do it. See what we did here, guys? The for loop runs at the length of the spawn objects. And this is only really going to run if spawn object's length is greater than zero. So really, we want to do uh, some sort of test or check. So if spawn objects dot length does not equal zero, if that's not true, then go ahead and spawn the objects. And it'll just instantiate those objects. It's going to quickly set them, set them to launch on start equals true. Which means when we go to our coin here, we want to make sure that it's not set to true by default, right? Right? Because what we want to do is let's say I have a coin. I want to be able to place it right here, which it's disabled, which is not good. Yeah. I want to be able to place that coin right here. And also, it should not be 45. So zero that out for the rotation. Let's delete this one and drag it again and see what we get. Uh oh. Go to the coin here and go to the graphic. I see. I think we're good, actually. Yes. Yes, we are good. So really quick, I want to double check something here. When I drag this coin in, eh, I don't really like that positioning of it. Hmm. I really want it to be able to be placed right here. So it makes me wonder, wonder about something. Anyway, let's hit play really quick and double check. I don't want it to launch on start. I can collect it, good, great. So 
let's go to our breakable object here. And as you can see, we now have this um, drop down here and it's spawn objects. So if I set it to one and then put a coin there, actually I set it to like uh, 10, the theory is that it should launch all 10 of those coins. And as long as we set launch is, or launch on start to true, they'll come out, okay? Let's take a look. So we've got 10 there, all hanging out together, which is bad. So launch on start should be set to true. For some reason it's not. So let's go here and figure out what's going on. What comes first, awake or start? Well, 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 well. Um, why is this happening? What comes first? I think it's start. I don't think that's the issue. Hmm. So for some reason it's not, uh, oh, what comes first? Or awake. Huh. Okay, awake is always called before start. So I'm confused. This is not occurring. Launch on start is set to true. Huh. Awake. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Are y'all still arguing about prototypes? Yeah, this is our prototype. This uh, this has taken us about two and a half weeks, so I don't think we're, the graphics are too good. No, it's not the father engine. But that's that's an interesting thought. This is a brand new engine. Well, Unity is the engine, but anyway. So for some reason, they're not launching on start. Okay. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. Um, it could be, it could be this right here, freeze me. Um, Thomas, once you call instantiate, awake will run, which happens before you set it to true. Okay. You think so? You think so? That sucks. So should I put it in start? Perhaps. I think you're right. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look. Good, there we go. But I also think that they touched that box, which caused, causes some issues. So I think that this, uh, the box, I would call this, let's add a layer. This is gonna be called, um, a breakable. So you have collectibles and you have breakables. I don't want the collectibles to be able to touch the breakables. But I, I do though. But I do. So that's the issue. Here's what we'll do. On the breakable, what we're gonna do, yes, yes. Yes, okay, that's what we'll do. On break, what we're gonna do is the collider, it's, yeah. Do we even have a collider variable? Yeah, we do. 
The box collider is going to be is trigger, and that's going to be set to false. All right, or you could just disable it, honestly. That way there's nothing occurring, right? There's no, there's no like, yeah, there's no collision that's occurring for like a split second. Let's take a look, guys. Still happened. Hmm. We're close. They're fun to collect though, I'll tell you what. So why is that happening, my friends? Well, I know I know one thing is in order to play that bounce sound, um I want the launch timeout to be greater than like point two. Okay. I know for a fact that's what I want. Because I don't want to be able to hear that sound the moment it interacts with that box, despite the fact that it shouldn't be interacting with that box to begin with. But shoot. We don't want that either. It needs to be greater than one or like point five, point six. Because the problem is, is touching the player and the player is immediately able to grab it. I don't know, guys. I want them to be able to pass through the player, honestly. Well, that's about all we got time for, guys, today. Just be sure to check out the links below if you want to learn more about game dev, interested in doing what I do. There's a 2D game kit for you, totally free, below. And there's also a 3D course, my brand new 3D course, totally free, called Easy 3D. This is an introductory course into 3D. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free, it's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit, I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me, hit subscribe, and also, this is important, hit that notification bell, here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have, and you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.